Let's bring in uh, Chris Sims, co-host of Pro Football Talk and, of course, Football Night in America analyst joining us on the program. We were just discussing the difference between a shuttle pass and a shovel pass. Which one is correct, being a former quarterback in the NFL? Um, I don't. Yeah, I don't know what a shuttle pass is. So I would say shovel pass is the only one I know of. A sh- I mean, I know how to run the twenty-yard shuttle at the combine, okay. but I don't know of a shuttle pass. Patrick Mahomes last night had two touchdown passes, and the passes were behind the line of scrimmage. Is that a shovel pass i i guess i would consider that a shovel pass yes i would a speed sweep shovel pass whatever yes should it count should it count as a touchdown i mean no not really as far as a touchdown pass i i don't know if i totally totally will say i agree with that i mean i'd uh, it's a tough one, actually. I haven't thought about it real deeply. Uh, it, is, it is a cheap way to get a touchdown pass. There's no doubt about that. But I'm, you know, Patrick Mahomes also gets a lot of not cheap ways to get a touchdown pass too, to where I can live with it, you know, and he can he can have a cheapie every now and then. Uh, let's dissect what we saw with. Let's start with the Chiefs and the Patriots here, because I thought I thought Belichick, you know, flying day of no cam had a, had a game plan there. It just if you don't have that you know quality quarterback, then you know you're not going to win that game. But what did you think of what he was trying to do against Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City? Yeah, well, I think you're right. I mean, the game plan was really quality on both sides of the football, and he didn't even need like a good quarterback to maybe win that football game or at least keep a really competitive fourth quarter. He just needed a quarterback that wasn't you know stupid for lack of a better phrase i mean that just was unbelievable some of the things we saw brian hoyer do i mean really i'm just shocked by that to this point lack of management lack of awareness of what he's doing all of those things but back to what you said i mean again belichick shows why he's one of the greatest coaches ever he does a game plan that he just feels like is going to help them win the football game it doesn't matter how pretty it looks or whatever And they do match up really well with Kansas City, Dan. They really do. They got the best secondary in football. They can match that speed. And then along with outside-the-box thinking from the Belichicks, and then, of course, we know on the offensive side of the ball, I mean, there's always something creative. And they're a force running the football. I mean, I know, like you, I couldn't help but sit there last night and go, what is this game like if Cam Newton's playing out here? And then you had uh, the Falcons against the Packers. And even though Aaron Rodgers doesn't have his top, what, two, three receivers, and I know it's Atlanta, but there is is an effortless feel watching Aaron Rodgers. What changed for Aaron Rodgers from last year to this year? Yeah, I I think, you know, you've heard him say, like, you know, the, the communication, the offense, you know, year two, they're being more creative. I do think it's the trust factor that's really led to the better play because one, I mean, you've been watching Rogers. You've heard me talk about him for years. You know, I think he was scarred for a time where people weren't open that much. So, Ooh, that's a tight window. All right. I don't like that. I'm not going to take a chance. Let me dance around the pocket and I'll find an easier completion because I'm Aaron Rodgers and I can do that. But it also led to some, you know, moments of, wait, that guy was open last year and you should have thrown it to him. And I think this year he's just totally bought in to where last night, I mean, how many times did we see him just look at the first receiver and he went, he's open, maybe only by three inches, but I'm going to cut it loose and throw it in there. And to me, it's just more aggressive that way with his frame of thinking or, or, or my thinking there. And their play calling is more aggressive too. I think that's the two biggest things that jump out to me, let alone, like you said, Atlanta, stinks yeah. on the defensive side of the ball yeah uh speaking of winless teams the texans uh showing bill o'brien the door is, is that a coveted will that be a coveted head coaching job i do i do think so because of number four at the quarterback spot i mean deshaun watson he's not playing his best football right now but they got a lot of issues on that football team and i think you know regardless coaches are going to look at that and go wait i can go down there and coach deshaun watson still early in his career, you know, you can still build a team around that. So I would expect, you know, that's where I expect 
to be something offensively orchestrated as far as a head coach. Is that Eric Bieniemy? Is this where we hear the Lincoln Riley conversation once again from Oklahoma? Uh, but I would think that they're going to be all in about an offensive minded coach because of Deshaun Watson. When did the Dolphins start to give Tua a little run here? I mean, I hope sooner rather than later. Uh, I mean, I would like to see him get out there where the season's still somewhat in the balance, right? It's not like, oh, they're one and seven and it's totally over. Uh, I, I would like to see them out here soon. I mean, you know, we know what Ryan Fitzpatrick is. I do find it a hair concerning that Tua and there's not more conversation about him being out there already. I think that kind of speaks volumes a little bit. Uh, to the fact that maybe he's just not running away with it or so impressive that they go, man, he's so impressive. The team sees it. Everybody sees it. We got a bench Fitzpatrick and play Tua. You know, we're doing a disservice to our team. It obviously has not got to that. But I would think another two, three losses for sure, no matter what, you're going to start to see Tua. I know that Joe Burrow being the number one pick, he didn't have any competition to be the starting quarterback. Justin Herbert had a little bit with Tyrod Taylor. Can Justin Herbert be better than Joe Burrow? Yes, he can. Yes, uh, no, no doubt about it. I mean, anybody that listen to you know listens to me and and what I talk about draft wise, quarterback wise, all of those things. It's one thing I tried to say a lot. Joe Burrow was clearly the best quarterback coming into this draft, but I kind of had said all along, Justin Herbert has an incredibly high ceiling. I mean, he has special things about his game. And, yeah, he was raw, and he played in an Oregon offense that wasn't that good. And, again, that's where people misevaluate too much right now at the quarterback position. They, did, they take the whole team, and they blame it on one guy and go, I don't know. I mean, the stats weren't good, and they didn't win national championship. Must have been Justin Herbert's fault. No, absolutely not. That's ridiculous. He's big. He has a special arm. I mean, he can make game-changing type throws. And you can see he knows how to take care of the football and throw with some accuracy, too. A rookie, some mistakes there. But, man, a lot of positives to build on. Yeah, I think, and I agree with you, because if we're going to factor in that Joe Burrow is the number one quarterback, I got to factor in everybody on that offensive side of the ball. Like, he had unbelievable talent there. Because I don't know if he's the first pick overall or he's a fifth-round pick, which he would have been the previous year. And, you know, trying to – and you do a great job at this, but trying to look at talent at that position and say, like Jordan Love, I have no idea. I know the previous year, when he had weapons, he was really good. Then his last season, he didn't have weapons, and he didn't look good at all, but was still a first-round pick. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's tough. It is, it's the toughest thing about evaluating the position. It's why I've been, you know, hey, listen, I was, you know, whatever, lucky, whatever you want to say with guys like Josh Allen and even Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson because I just went, hey, I, I mean, just block it out. Don't, don't have any bias when you go in to watch this film. Evaluate the player for what he is and then go, wait, what is he being asked to do? Is it realistic that he can get that done? And then also, is there help around him that's realistic to go, wait, that's his fault or that's a good job by him or whatever that is. But too often, it is hard. Now, Joe Burrow, where I would say it was different than maybe some quarterbacks when you see on like an awesome college team to like what you're saying, he made so many plays when I went, man, there was nothing there. The defense won the play. They got a good pass rush. Everybody was covered. And he still made something happen. And to me, that always speaks volumes. And, and that's something I look at. Because life in the NFL, unless you're on one of the best teams in the game, is going to be a lot of, whoa, the defense won. This guy's covered. I'm under, under attack here. And I got to make something happen off schedule. And that's why Burrow was special. And I think that's why we're going to see Justin Herbert being really special as well. But to your point too, Dan, if Justin Herbert was on LSU or Alabama, they'd be just as damn good as they were already. I mean, just, you know, you need a team. He's Chris Sims, co-host of Pro Football Talk and NBC Football Night in America. I just don't know what I'm seeing when I watch Josh Allen because I don't know if it's a second coming of Cam Newton. I, I, I just, I'm not quite sure. Yeah. It's like, um, it's like, you know, they have like the evolution of humans, right? And, you know, it like goes from the caveman to like, 
I don't know what this is. I look at Josh Allen and go, this is Brett Favre 27 years later and the evolution of man, right? Just, yeah, plays with his hair on fire sometimes and he does things and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe he did that. Whoa, what an amazing play. I mean, that's really what he kind of reminds me of. But I think, you know, you're, you're saying it. He's a special talent. You can see. And again, that was another guy. Oh, the numbers and, you know, the grading and, oh, all the, you know, small grading conference. experts. Yeah, small right, conference. small conference. The crappiest team I've seen any top-tier quarterback play on in the last few years. No pass protection. Playing in the blizzard and all of those type of things. No help around them. But, you know, you see the talent. And, again, now they've helped him out with getting more talent in Buffalo. And Brian Dayball and Sean McDermott are really attacking through Josh Allen, which I think tells you a lot. They trust him. They have the weapons around him. He's refined his game, certainly. And he, he's, he's a superstar. There's no doubt he's one of the five best quarterbacks in football right now as we sit here through, through four weeks. All right. So that's Russell Wilson. Yep. Mahomes. Right. Aaron Rodgers. Right. I'm still going to go Lamar. I'm going to put okay. Lamar in my top five. I'm not going to let that Kansas City game just totally throw me for a loop for all the other good stuff I've seen for the last year and a half. And then, yeah, I'm going to throw Josh Allen in there right now. And I know we want to see more and everything like that, but what we've seen to this point is, other than Russell Wilson, MVP-level stuff from Josh Allen. So we'll see if he can continue to do this, but – they certainly seem confident he can just by the way they're calling the game and attacking on a week-to-week basis. Why are we treating the NFL MVP the way we do the Heisman? We, we want to hand out the Heisman <laughs> after September. When did we get into this rush to say, oh, he's the MVP right now, the NFL, after three weeks? And I go, it's three weeks. It's like <laughs> Leonard Fournette would have won the Heisman if, if they ended in September when he was in <laughs> right. LSU. You're you're right. Why are we in know. a hurry to like? Are we running out of things to talk about? Where we got to go? Like, how do I stir up some controversy? Josh Allen and Russell Wilson for MVP. I'll hang up and listen. Like, <laughs> well, yeah, I know you're right. Oh, I think what, what it, at least in my mind, what I'm doing is I'm just trying to paint a picture of damn, this guy's playing good football. That's all I really. But give you a could damn be playing about. against crappy teams. You, I mean, I, I know. I know, but can, can I'm, we I'm not wait? Gonna... How about eight games? Can yeah. we just wait sure. eight games? But I get it, and okay, I won't say it anymore about <laughs> the MVP stuff and anything. I'll, I'll take your coaching. I always listen to you, but I will say too, we don't have to say MVP or anything like that. But I am sick of everybody giving like Josh Allen a compliment, and prior to that, they give him three backhanded compliments, where it's like, well, he was crappy and he had bad accuracy and. It's an anomaly, but somehow he's good. Like, I'm sick of hearing that crap. He's really good. He's here to stay. And in my formula, with my rankings, I knew he was going to be good. I'll leave you with this. If you were yeah. running the Falcons, yeah. would you consider trading Julio Jones? I don't know if you can trade Matt Ryan, but would you would you look to rebuild yes. the Falcons? Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's uh, the, the shelf life of this team is over, in my opinion. It's it, it's done. They've tried to hang on to the stars that were there, that 2016 team. There's no depth of the football team at all. I mean, here this is the second year in a row or third year in a row. The few injuries and their team is shot. They have nothing else because they're so top heavy. I look at two guys where I go right now and just go, whoa. When the trade block comes around, Julio Jones and A.J. Green, uh, if I'm the, the Bengals, they got receivers. They just drafted a receiver with a 33rd pick of the draft. They're good. This is the time to strike to get assets to rebuild your football team. And, yeah, I would say that. If, I, if I'm Arthur Blank or, or uh, the Brown family in Cincinnati, I'm, I'm putting them on the trade block when that time comes around. Good to talk to you, Chris, as always. Thank you. Continue to stir it up. All right. I'm not stirring anything up. I'm just talking ball, but thank you. I appreciate that. And tell the, uh, your, you know, jerk friends. I said, hello, my jerk friends. Wow. <laughs> wow. Thank you, Chris. Uh, by the way, Dan, Chris says, say hello to you jerk friends there. 